But um, this stuff, um, it works really well in my opinion. I mean, I'm not a deer or dog. And I haven't seen anybody put it to the test like that to see if they really can smell it. There's a few things you want to do besides just use this. Uh, might not be a bad idea to wash your regular clothes. Uh, get used to practicing covering up your scent before you ever go hunting, maybe the month before, a couple weeks before, washing your laundry and everything. Try to, and then put like your clothes, like I made, I mentioned in another video, outside, let the air out too. And, uh, you know, just getting to practice, you know. But sometimes people just use it once, and maybe if you use it prior, a little while it might actually work better. Uh, I always recommend people learn how to play the wind and try to work the wind and uh, then you can use this stuff and it probably help a little bit. But, uh, but if you use stuff like dough and rut and stuff like that if they're if it's at the right moment in time there this right here may not even really be <coughs> necessary but uh, I think it works well. I did see a, a, a review and a test where they put all these different kinds of uh, sprays. You know, I ain't sponsored by these people. Uh, you can't pay me to give you a false, honest review. It's my opinion that it works well. Uh, but I uh, also use like Arm and Hand or an Unscented. For my, usually like my regular clothes, because this didn't come with much. It's like $30 from Amazon for that whole thing. And it's just like, it's all just like sitting in there. That's all it is. But I don't know what the chemicals are. Let me see if it's got it listed. Yeah, they might not. Listed. Let me see if it's listed on here. Super concentrate. Doesn't really tell you what's in it, but uh, I do think this stuff works pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, anyways, so, and there's some other stuff I ordered, Granger or something like that, for a clean apology. It's supposed to be pretty good. It's what the manufacturer recommends, so uh, we're going to look at that too and try it out. I don't, like I said, I don't have my doubts about this, but, uh, really, uh, it's hard to tell if it really works, but that, uh, review I was talking about, they put all these different ones, and they use a, a, a trained canine unit, a dog, and, uh, that dog sniffed them out, all these different ozone things, and they didn't use this stuff, I don't remember, but, uh, them using it, they, you have to double check. But they used like scent killer and nose jammer and all that stuff. None of it seemed to stop the dog from finding the person. So, and uh, the deer, I think they have about the same kind of uh, smelling ability. But, uh, but uh, none of that stuff seemed to really work. And you know. It's hard to tell. You might, you might not be able to smell it. And this stuff, it washes out and you can't smell odors. Uh, at least I didn't. And, uh, but I still think it might work well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it might give you an edge or help out a little bit. So, I mean, if you obviously putting out a lot of body odor and scent, then, you know, deer might get a little wary or something if it gets wind of you. But if it's lightly and you got, like, like Don Rudd or something like that out, his uh, instincts and you know, drive to breed uh, might, you know, he might ignore the other scent, you know, over uh, a dull heat. Anyways, so that's that unboxing. Um, uh, yeah, so. Uh, what else was I going to talk about? Trail camera, face, uh, the shirt. I don't know. Try to turn the brightness down on my monitor. 
I know it gets real bright, can't see it, anything on here if I wanted to uh, talk about it, you know. Uh, again, I just read the Bible every day. Not all denomination. I don't get into all that denomination stuff. I mean, it's not scriptural, okay? And they try to justify most of them, and then they have a little variations of how they practice religion. But I've read the Bible, okay? I've studied it for years. I've been baptized and saved. And I don't just mean going to church and them dipping me in the water. I mean, I've received the Holy Spirit, and I know the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people might think, oh, I don't know if God's real, or I think it's a fairy tale. I don't believe all that. People don't stereotype me and put me in some of them groups. I'm a Christian. I believe in God, and I'll tell you what's written in it, okay? You ain't got to follow me. I'll just tell you. I try to direct people to God, and then you know, they can build a relationship and go from there. Uh, I'm not asking for your money. I don't want you to join a group with me, you know, other than fellowship uh, as a Christian. You know, same faith, common faith. But uh, denominationalism, that's inherently contrary to the will of God, okay? We're, we're not supposed to lay stumbling blocks, cause other people to err. God is not the author of confusion, okay? These people, they cause confusion, you know, traditions and stuff. Uh, it's not scriptural. No denomination can justify their establishment scripturally, okay? And as a, as a, having pointed that out and then maybe teaching it that way, those people are not listening to God's spirit. God's word, there's even a scripture that discusses this whole denominational aspect and teaches them not to do this. Maybe they don't tell you that, but it's in there. Uh, uh, let's see if I can't find it real fast here. This is scriptural. I studied Greek and Hebrew, so I want to get it right for myself. Because I know some of these people, the things they teach, and it's their doctrine. It's their teaching, you know. Uh, but uh, Bible. Uh, one says... Um, It should bring it up. Should. Okay, right here. Go to Bible Hub. Come to various. First Corinthians chapter three. Just probably go to that. For one, when one says I follow Paul, and another I follow Paulos, are you not mere human beings? It's right down there. It says fleshly and carnal. King James Version, which is what I prefer. But I read all these other ones too sometimes, just kind of get a rounder understanding of it. You know, I'm not pretending to believe in God. I don't play games with God. Okay. I fear the consequences and I just don't play games with God like that. Uh, Jesus paid too great of a price and he suffered too much uh, for our sake, you know, uh, to make it possible for us to find forgiveness with God and be reconciled, you know. And I believe in Jesus Christ, not a shame. You know, if you have a problem with that, well, you have a problem with it. Because I don't have a problem with testifying that I believe in Jesus Christ. Anyways, uh, so, you know, you read this. Uh, let's see here. Who then is Paul, or who is Apollos, but ministers by whom he believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? Uh, I had planted Apollos water, but God gave me increase. You know, they were talking about following this apostle and this apostle, and then when they come together, they were they had differences. Yeah, don't believe the the, the uh, common uh, view or saying that well, it was meant for God or meant for us to believe differently, or that God meant for us to interpret things differently. No, people, not in the sense that you know. They believe this way and they believe this way. Mm -mm. And it even goes on to explain that. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Believe the same things. That's what it says. Believe the same things. 
mind the same things, practice the same things of one mind. Let's see here. Yeah, let's see here. Okay. Actually, it's see, it even goes right here to say that there be no divisions among you, okay? Uh, you know, God's not going to tell this person over here to believe this and this other person over here to believe this, and then they come together and they don't agree. God's not divided against himself, okay? Uh, that's what creates confusion. God's not the one responsible for this, people are. You know, they have their own motives. They might appear like sheep, but they don't make them so. They can appear like ministers of God, but they don't make them so. You know, but uh, I've dealt with a lot of these people that they have a good reputation in community. Oh, pastor so-and-so. But then I get to know these pastors personally, and I come to find out, well, they aren't entirely what they seem to be during a church service. And a church, the church, as is all referred to in Scripture, it's not a reference to a physical structure. It's referring to uh, the group of people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Uh, I also want to discuss a little bit more about this because, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Um, well, I'm going to talk about this. When they first, Christians first met together and had fellowship, they just met at various places. But they come together to have fellowship, okay? There was no set aside structure, you know, for that. Which, you know, in a sense, it's not really wrong, but to put a title on it, that, that lays a stumbling block. That creates people confused, to be confused. When I first became a Christian, I was like, well, what's the difference between Baptist and Methodist? I didn't have no prior knowledge of what was written in the Bible. But over several 20 years, I've learned, you know, through the process of time, it's all false doctrine, people. You know, they're not going to re represent God the way he really is and would have you to think. So don't write God off and don't stereotype me because you might not really know God's person, you know, his personality or what's actually written in Scripture. My uh, advice is read it for yourself. You know, and then you can search within yourself whether you believe that God is real or not because uh, those people do not represent God, the majority of them. No denomination can justify its establishment scripturally. They won't be able to take you to scripture where it says, well, where is it written to call yourself a Seventh-day Adventist? It's traditions. They've added stuff to it, and it's misleading because it's not sound. It's not in there. Tells them not to, so they're not obeying God. And they say, well, we believe there's one church. Well, you're supposed to put it into practice. Otherwise, the word of God says you're only deceiving yourself. So, you know, I'm not going to follow somebody who's misleading himself, okay? As long as I'm aware of it. God wouldn't deceive me. You know, uh, uh, I've been adopted through the gospel, okay? No shame. Uh, I love God and I, I'm thankful for all he's ever done for me and I'm not perfect and I need forgiveness on a daily basis and and I don't believe myself to be judgmental but I mean if somebody steals something right in front of you you can't say they didn't steal it and if you say well you shouldn't take that don't belong to you you're not my judge people you know their sins are out in the open you know going into judgment God's already judged. It's wrong, okay? It's not me that's judging you. God is judging you, you know? That's wrong. He decides, not me. But anyways, um, that's something else I really want to mention about this. Uh, you know, give God a chance. Maybe you set aside a lot of what you've been told or uh, mentioned to about the way God is, you know? Maybe you've never really read the Bible for yourself. 
Try to read it for yourself. Try to learn about it a little bit. Give God a chance. You know, these people, they're, they're not helping God's purpose. They're causing problems. You know, and they try to have this control over people, and it's not right. They have alternative motives. They're crafty at it, too, because they'll say, the more you sow, the more you give and you're offering, the more God's going to bless you. And they try to encourage people to pursue money, like, more money. That's a, the blessing from God. God can bless you with money because you need it. But these people encourage you to get rich and give you a percentage of your income. And you think about how much money they can make if they speak to a big congregation. Everybody's getting a little percentage. The more money they make, the more they get, you know. So, you know, be, be aware of this. It's not how it works. He said uh, the fowls of the air have birds to uh, nest to sleep in, and the foxes have holes and dens to sleep in, but he don't even have anywhere to lay his head. He's the king of kings, and he was like somebody who's homeless almost. So, you know, if the Lord did that, I mean, you know, these people drive Escalades and nice vehicles, the uh, church, some of them. You gotta be careful. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. They'll, some of them would do horrible things to you. I know, from personal experience. Devilish people, man. Might seem like Christians and sound like good people, but it don't make it so, okay? But, um, you know, uh, you know, there was a time when I didn't know all this stuff when I went to church, you know, but I learned over the years there's a lot of things that you're not supposed to work on Sunday or God helps those that help themselves. Quite the opposite is true. We have obligations to repent, but God helps those that can't help themselves, you know, in so many ways. That's completely the opposite, you know. God's a father to the fatherless, you know. Uh, he that oppresses the poor reproaches his maker. You know, uh, we couldn't save ourselves, so Christ died on our behalf. You know, so it's a little quite the opposite, you know. But the whole working on Sunday, Jesus said, you know, he's Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. Of course, Saturdays are real Sabbath. Uh, the Christians, when they first got together, as we mentioned in the scripture, they did so at the first day of the week. And Sunday is actually the first day of the week. You look at a calendar. Sunday, Saturday is the last day. Okay. But that's a long topic. I don't get too much into that. But uh, anytime the church is mentioned in the Bible, okay, it's identified by its geographical location, not by Baptist or Methodist or Pentecostal or especially Catholicism. Catholicism, that's probably the most corrupted doctrine out there. It's not its not worth people's opinion. Like, well, you know, you shouldn't judge people. Hey, I've searched it out. Don't get involved in that. You will have to give an account on Judgment Day of everything you ever said and done. You do not want to live that way. You know, it's not wise to do that. The Word of the Living God, that's what you should listen to. And it's up to you at the end of the day. I can't force you, and I'm not trying to. But I can warn you that if you don't repent, you will perish. Jesus himself said that. So, you know, there's reasons to fear the consequences if, if you don't. It's not wise to ignore that. But the church, uh, you know, and God loves you. It, it's not that he doesn't love you. John three sixteen, as you've probably heard many times. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He loves us all equally. Jesus paid the, the ultimate price uh, equally for everyone. So God loves us the same. But we can't uh, experience that and inherit that and feel that if we don't repent, turn away from our sins, and turn to him and seek. He's, he's very willing to forgive us. Doesn't matter what you've done. Don't dwell on that. The devil will try to fill you for guilt and accuse you. God won't forgive you. Hey, 
go to him out of faith and ask for his forgiveness. And you'll see that he is a merciful God. But he won't just let you do all this that's wrong and you not repent and then, oh, you're forgiven. You know, you got to do your part. You have to do your part. That's me speaking to you right now is God trying to connect with you. You know, that's how it works. You know, the Word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, remains the same, never changes. But I want to touch on one more thing. Anytime the church was identified, it was identified by its geographical location, but it was always referred to as the church, or the church of Jesus Christ, or the church of God. But not in a title ship sense, but just because of Christ is the Lord. It's his church, and God, it is God's church. But title ship, mm -mm. promotes the vision, way stumbling blocks, not the will of God. You know, people ought to fear and not do that because Jesus himself said that whoever sets a stumbling block in front of one of these believers, these little ones that believe in me, is better than a millstone. You know what a millstone is? When they used to grind grain and turn it into powder or flour. I mean, it's a big old thing chiseled out of stone in a, a mill type thing. You can Google it. Uh, have that tied around your neck and you crash into the Dead Sea and try to keep afloat. You know how hard that would be? And Jesus used that as an illustration. So, there's reason to fear it. Don't do that. It's not justified scripturally. I've read the Bible. I know. So, anyways, so, yeah, uh, repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel means the good news. The good news is we've sinned, we've gone wrong, but there's a way for us to be forgiven. And God won't remember our sin no more. As far as the east is from the west. Okay? Uh, God's not a liar. It is as he says it is. So. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, if you have any questions about this, you can ask me and I'll do my best to answer and give you the, an honest answer. Because I know everything I say and I do, I must explain, be held accountable and explain myself to God in judgment. But I love God, and He gives us a peace that passes all understanding. Like I said, I read it every day. I discipline myself and make myself do it, but not because I don't want to, but because I can get tired and don't want to. But, um, so, back to on the ground. Uh, yeah, we're going to try to get out and do some things and see some places and stuff like that. You know, entertainment. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, if you want to follow the channel, if you want to be able to get the most recent videos I've uploaded and stuff, just, you know, just add me, subscribe uh, if you're interested, you know. Uh, but I got to look into more into coyotes because uh, I don't know that Tiffany Bottoms will be the only place I hunt. But I am trying to move out into a country type area like that or over there. I do like that place. It's nice. There's other places I'll consider, but uh, I consider Sh Shano, which is just north of here, not too far, or sort of north of here. Um, it's like northwest of there. But uh, there's just big areas there to hunt. West hunting pressure, less likely to run into people. But I haven't e scouted it too much. But I did find out that wolves are there. But I'm not planning to hunt wolves. I'm not afraid of them. We might just go there to see, see if we can find some on a trail camera or something. I ain't, I ain't worried about any of that stuff. I'm not afraid of them. God will protect me and keep me safe. He always has. This way of thinking never failed me. God's never failed me. So, we'll, uh, we'll go make a video of me putting this camera up. We'll leave it there for like a week. See what all we can uh, see and get on there. And, uh, 
But I'll show you some footage. We'll see how good it does. Um, um, uh, what else was I going to do? Uh, yeah, I'm going to do a test on that gear. Maybe when it gets real cold, we'll see just how how well it does. I think it's going to do pretty good, personally. And I did think uh, I found another base layer I'm going to compare with the Sitka stuff. It's a mer merino wool. Uh, it's marrow wool. It's like 400 gram uh, weight. Uh, we'll see if compare that as a, as a base layer. I still think I'm going to wear the ultra light Sitka base layer underneath it. But then as my second layer, I'm going to put that base layer. I'm going to put that wool that mirror wool on there and see how it compares with the uh, the sick and heavyweight bottoms and the fat natty hoodie uh, just to see not that that stuff doesn't work good it's just i wanted to try it and see if there's a difference it might be warmer but uh it does I, you know it might not help with the whole cold uh, odor controlling most people ain't gonna be hunting in that cold of weather anyways so like i said it might not be necessary anyways I, me getting cold when i was hunting and got down 25 wasn't an issue that wind blocker works really well uh, you, you know the the stratus is more like a shell it's got a little bit of insulation but you need to find the right base layers and mid layers underneath it uh, for insulation and then that is like a shell for blocking the wind it works good for that quiet and I, like i said i wear that stuff just you know casually too some of it not the bibs but like the jacket uh, to work and the store and you know out in the weather because i walk a lot of places right now until i get my vehicle fixed uh, i got something coming i'm going to show you guys and do a little review on that too uh just to cover it, not too many reviews on that specifically. That's one thing about making reviews on stuff. You know, this camera I got, there's some reviews and okay, but this is another one. This is a, you know, just the typical person that might buy this stuff and tell you whether it's good or not. I think it's good because I, I did a lot of uh, red reviews and seen the footage and stuff and compared it with other ones. And I think it'll do pretty good. But, uh, well, I think that might conclude this episode of uh, On the Ground. Seems like I was going to cover some other stuff real quickly. But I cleaned my desk off a little bit. Oh, I had this road mic, you probably said. And it's for, like, my GoPro and a camera. But I don't know if I can hook it up to this iPhone of mine. Might be getting a bear can or a phone with a bear camera, but I don't know. I don't really want to pay a thousand dollars for a kind of phone. But, uh, well, I think that might conclude it for this episode of On the Ground. So, uh, well, we'll see you next time here on On the Ground. My name is Shane. I am being your host. <laughs>